Unified communications as it is today is going to reshape dramatically in the future. I think that what I'm saying right now is going maybe to be mainstream in uh, two years. But the idea is that the social network, how it is today, is a form of unified communication. The problem is that we actually don't, we don't need unified communication. We need what it brings to us. So it brings to us faster communication channels, less boundaries, basically you you can express yourself, you can say everything you want. In some cases, they bring a lot of disadvantages. I just read a study that says that the rate of divorce is got three times bigger than unified communication to, to social networks. And of course, due to unified communication, because it's communication channels, that's how people got there. So uh, we are not the only, only one who realizes. There are actually a lot of people who realize this. It was funny, when I was writing this uh, presentation, as I was writing it, I saw this. It was a Twitter, a tweet which got to my Facebook page. And it's from Sergei, who is a very smart guy, who said, oh, look, this guy Andy had a lot of devices. It's for, him, it's for him, he has seven. You know, this, I asked him, what's this blue contact stuff? He said, it's a Russian company. It's like Facebook in Russia. And I started to count how many communication channels I have. Oh, I think that I have more than him. So basically, he got seven is a decent number. But he realized that he needs, this needs to be integrated some way, somehow, sometime. I didn't know how. It's, this is going to happen, actually. So this is from a, actually from a very high profile user. So regarding social networking, as I said, social networking actually is in fact communication. It's not something different. It's that just different in the way how it behaves. The social networking is producing a lot of information. It's very hard to say what kind of information is useful, which are the pictures which are useful, what are the threads that relate to your behavior. This is kind of a different thing. So, it's not really unified communication, it's something that should be analyzed by another application. For us, it's very important to understand the service provider who integrates social networking, who integrates unified communication, what he's able to do with such kind of information, supposing that a service provider, which is kind of small, has access to this data. First, they should have access to this data. This is a question that I cannot answer right now. The problem is that we try to integrate everything together and to give the service providers the opportunity to provide the service he wants. And the service he wants is dictated by regulations. Maybe in some countries you are not allowed to do some things. Dictated by business flows. Maybe that you have customers that want to have access to some services and some other customers that don't want to have access to some services. So what we thought initially is that it's going to be not easy, but not extremely complicated, it looks to be extremely complicated from the technical and business perspective. Social unified communications, how it's called, what it is an evolution or a revolution? If I ask a developer what it is, he says oh, it's totally a revolution. Anyway, developers tend to say this even if it's not actually a revolution, but you, you cannot trust this because the revolution threshold is pretty low. The problem is that from the business perspective, What's, what's the marketing guy saying? Saying definitely revolution. From the user perspective, it's just evolution. It's basically seeing everything that had in multiple devices, multiple ways, accessible from different kind of media altogether. Not such a catchy thing. For him, it's very important at the personal level because everything is there, he can do more. He does not have to check a lot of things. That's interesting. The problem is, and actually the issue in this kind of uh, an environment, is who owns this information? It's owned by me as a user, or it's owned by the service provider, it's owned by third parties. Right now it's Facebook, but it might be another network. It might be Google coming up with something new. It might be one of those startups. We don't know. 
If you are looking at the way how the social component is integrated in unified communication, we just see a lot of information. A lot of information and a lot of communication flows. What we have right now, from my perspective, I say that's legacy. From some other perspective, I say that's modern. From even some other perspective, I say that's revolutionary. So basically, our Voip Now platform, it has absolutely everything but unified communication. But unified communication is in a way how we see it in the future. Like social networking. The social networking part is missing. And this, from my perspective, I think that right now the social networking part is something like 30% important. Maybe for some people it's 0% important because they don't realize it. But it's going to be 80% important in a couple of years. I don't know exactly how many. So what we are working on is to bring unified communication, social networking together in a hub. When I'm saying social networking, it doesn't mean that we are going to have a new social network, something like this. No, it means that we should be able to access all this data from everywhere in one place, in what we call the hub, and we should be able to put together from all the words everything what's best for that user. So I should be able to choose. I should be able to choose if it's uh, if I want to have telephony integrated with Facebook, not actually with Facebook, but with Facebook information. I should be able to choose if I want to integrate my contacts with Facebook or my uh, calls, even my calls, that's, that's important. Many times, for example, when a call comes in, and that's a pretty basic requirement, I want to see who is calling me. Uh, but what if I'm able to see why it's calling me? For me, it would be very important. I wouldn't answer this. But it's not only for me, for a lot of people. So uh, making this possible, for us, it's the extreme thing. Having everything in one place, all resources. What we wanted to do is something very easy. Just put a, an interface, and in the first 10 seconds, the person who is looking at the interface and see what happens, even without touching the cable, should be able to say, wow. That's something quite difficult. The social networks is the absolute thickness, user thickness. You know that it, in hosting, for example, a lot of people are migrating. So they like the cheap service, or, uh, or maybe they don't like uh, that company anymore, stuff like this. They leave hosting companies, and they have, it's like employment, you know? They move from one hosting provider to another. Very few companies succeed to have a very high customer retention. And in many cases, it's not because of the company. But on social networks, you cannot really do this. First, I'm thinking I have a friend who has almost 20,000 pictures on Facebook. <laughs> That's all. Smallest telephone is crazy. He knows this. But he's putting everything on Facebook. <laughs> and what's interesting is that he's always tagging people. So he's not only about, the, but he's also helped by his very large network of friends, of course. But it's not only about the picture, it's only about the information that's inside the picture. So it's data, it's community, and it's feature set. So basically, the feature set is important. That's how, actually, Facebook became more important than MySpace, because they had a much nicer Facebook. It was very easy to be used. MySpace was very complicated. So from a service provider perspective, what's important is to have the cloud ready, or use a third-party cloud from the infrastructure point of view. That's not a problem. To build a unified communication service, to take the phased approach, as I said, first migrate customers, then legacy applications, and take them to the cloud, educate users about using unified communications, and prepare infrastructure for social communication. Preparing infrastructure means preparing for massive storage. As a massive storage, when you design our infrastructure, means like 
standardized standardized of data. This is what a service provider should be able to store and should be able to store for free. Because actually, it's not free, it is a service, right? So if you just to resume a very fast. From the Unified Communication perspective, of course the business has a lot of reasons to migrate now. As that approach, replace everything, cost, strong differentiator, uh, fast revenue increase, of course, for a service provider. Service provider get upsell quite easily. It meets the uh, business uh, the businesses with a lot of functionalities they are interested in right now. But that's not important. It's actually providing the foundation for next generation social communication services, which is usually hidden. The social communications uh, says that it's actually a part of unified communication, it's a service enabler, so everyone who has a unified communication service should have the social communication part. When it's going to start, that's kind of hard to predict, but I think that in 2012, so next year, we're going to have another presentation, which is going to be how it is with social networks and unified communications. Thank you very much for your attention.